Irvin Graf emigrated from Hungary to Australia as a bricklayer and started a small business in 1952 with the help of founders of Stocks and Holdings Limited, Albert Scheinberg and John Hammond, providing a much needed loan. Today, Irvin's incredible legacy lives on and that small business has grown exponentially to become Stockland, Australia's largest diversified property group with commercial assets, residential projects and retirement living villages around the country. Irvin studied architecture in Hungary before relocating to Sydney after World War II. He quickly identified a growing need in Sydney for affordable housing and created his first residential project, transforming a suburban poultry farm into a housing estate with 19 homes. The success of this project enabled the business to grow rapidly and expand its scope to other suburbs throughout Sydney. He was always very flexible. Uh, Irvin basically could see the main chance, could see the economic opportunity and uh, he wasn't big on strategy so he didn't have a, um, a particular focus on any particular sector of property. Six years later, Irvin took his business public by acquiring the smallest company listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. He diversified into suburban retail projects and eventually became the first developer to build a drive-in shopping centre, the Piccadilly Centre in Wollongong. The opening of these centres were major community events, with shoppers keen to enjoy the changing retail trends that Stockland helped shape. He was also two steps ahead. Uh, he was doing things that were pioneering and, uh, and innovative at the time and taking considerable risk. Uh, you know, in today's market, there'd be analysts crawling all over him. Uh, that wasn't the case then, so he had a lot more latitude to, to do it, but he used that latitude very, very well. As an architect, Irvin was always interested in developing good buildings that would stand the test of time. Irvin's vision for Stockland was to not merely achieve growth and profits, but to make a worthwhile contribution to the development of our cities and our great country. Irvin was very innovative, in, particularly in his early years. Um, people don't, well, people would not be aware that there were many, he actually did quite uh, a lot of adventurous things in his time. No, I think the, the, the most important thing was to make sure that we uh, kept it simple and kept it affordable and really uh, did our best to cater for the ordinary working families of Australia, which is still the case today. Stockland undertook its first large mixed-use project in 1965, Imperial Arcade in Sydney's CBD. It offered the first underground link to David Jones, four retail levels and six floors of air-conditioned office space. In 1967, Irvin opened the Park Regis Towers in Sydney, the then tallest residential apartment building in the world outside the US defying the skeptics who said high-density inner-city living would never take off. I used to teach uh, a course at some university on boards and strategy and I used to use Stockland and Urban, this was back 20 years, uh, as an example of the strategy being to have no strategy. In other words, to be ultimately flexible, to be sharp, to be well informed and to uh, buy well. One of Irvin's greatest contributions to the industry was revolutionising project funding. He introduced an internally managed property trust with institutional partners such as AMP, a venture capital model that remains intact today. At that time, the staple security was very innovative and I think it was the first in the world, but the model's now turned up everywhere. In June 2000, Irvin was awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia for services to the building and property industries. He retired as Stockland's chairman in October 2000 and sadly passed away in 2002, only days after Stockland celebrated its 50th anniversary. He is fondly remembered to this day as the company's guiding force. Now I remember the day well uh, when uh, I was appointed managing director of Stockland and uh, Irvin took me into his office because he was leaving at that stage, I think it was his, uh, just about his last day and uh, sat down and with a tear in his eye he said, uh, look after my baby. Irvin Graff saw the vast untapped potential of the Australian property market and created innovative new developments to meet the needs of a rapidly changing society, enriching the lives of thousands of Australians on a daily basis. 
He was very intelligent, uh, quick thinking, um, lateral thinking person and if, if the landscape was changing he was very quick to, to, uh, to change with it. I think the great thing about him is he wasn't constrained by anything other than his, his intellect uh, and his capacity to see a good opportunity when it arose. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Property Council of Australia in honouring Mr Irvin Graff, 2014 inductee to the Australian Property Hall of Fame. To Kitty, Michael, the whole Graff family, uh, congratulations on Irving being elevated into the Hall of Fame. I was very proud to succeed him and carry on his legacy, and I'm sure you're equally proud of uh, his legacy this evening. He is certainly well deserving of this induction into the Hall of Fame, and I'm sure his family will greatly appreciate um, this, this award. I congratulate the Graff family and wish them well. Uh, whilst Urban might have had tongue-in-cheek about this award, I think for the family it's a fitting recognition of someone who has undoubtedly been uh, one of the great Australian property people so far.